to more effects today. You might be asking yourself, why are ivermectin for COVID-19? Is it not used for parasites on animals? Who thought of this? And why are some people in countries like South Africa begging for it? You might also be asking yourself, who's this guy thinking he knows so much about this stuff? Well, I'm a researcher with more than 10 years of experience, and I'll try and explain the COVID-19 ivermectin scenario on the most understandable level as possible, using only credible references that are linked in the description below. First things first, what is COVID-19? Apparently there are different strains now, and what does this mean for us? Might this be the beginning to a virus apocalypse? COVID-19 is a part of the collective coronaviruses family, which may cause illnesses that are known to impact your lungs and breathing. As we all know by now, symptoms are very similar to the common cold. It may include signs such as fever, loss of energy, coughing, aches and pains, nasal congestions, runny nose, sore throat, diarrhea, yada yada yada, the list goes on, you know them all. Seven different types of coronaviruses have been found in humans, which are 229E, NL63, OC43, HQU1, mers covid which later develops to Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, sars cov a beta virus that causes severe acute respiratory syndrome, and SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19. But since the world has been struggling with SARS-CoV-2 since December 2019, and because it is the reason for all the havoc we are in, this will be our main focus. In order for us to understand how other medicine will fight against the coronavirus, we just need to understand a little bit more about the virus itself. So how does the virus look? They are spherical little gremlins coated with spikes of protein. These spikes help the virus bind to any healthy cells. These spikes are used to infect our cells, but at the same time it allows our bodies to see the virus. Bits of spikes can be used in a potential vaccine to produce antibodies against the virus. Beneath this ground of spikes on the virus is a membrane that can be disrupted by detergents and alcohols. That is why soap and sanitizers are so effective with the virus. Inside the membrane is the virus's genetic material. It's genome. Whereas the genomes of some viruses like chickenpox and smallpox are made of DNA like humans, those of coronaviruses are made of the closely related RNA. Ribonucleic acid or RNA is a polymeric molecule essential in various biological roles in coding, decoding, regulation and expression of genes. RNA viruses have small genomes which are subject to constant change. The difference between RNA and DNA is RNA contains the sugar ribose, basically a carbohydrate sugar, while DNA contains the slightly different sugar, deoxyribose, a type of ribose sugar that lacks one oxygen atom. And RNA has the nucleus uracil, while DNA contains thymine. But we're not going to look too much into that. Corona works on the principle of multiplication, and it can only multiply after entering a cell. The modus operandi for this is basically for that cell to self-detonate all cells. The main mechanism of spreading is through droplet infections. When people cough, sneeze or even when you touch someone that is ill and then touch access points on your face like your eyes, nose and mouth. Upon entering our bodies, the virus progressively makes its way to the lungs, intestines and spleen via a cargo transporter protein. When the virus has reached the lungs or any other area where it can have dramatic impact, it makes its way to your borderlining cells, the epithelial cells. The coronavirus connects to a specific receptor in order to inject its DNA into the cell. Your oblivious cell, ignorant of what is happening, executes new instructions, copy and reassemble. The cell then fills up with more and more of the virus until a critical point of overload, to which the cell self-destructs. The cell then disintegrates and releases more coronavirus particles to infect other cells. This means the number of cells grow exponentially, and after a couple of days, millions of body cells will be infected and billions of coronaviruses are present in the organ. At this point, the body has only seen the tip of the iceberg. As the immune cells get ready to fight the swarms of corona cells, the coronaviruses infect the immune cells, and this causes confusion. The immune, the immune system getting ready for war releases everything it has and calls upon neutrophil cells that releases fighting enzymes that kills as many good cells as bad cells. It also calls upon killer T cells that order healthy cells to commit suicide and self-destruct. The more and more immune cells arrive, the more damage is done and greater the consequences for our body. In most cases, the immune system realizes what's going on and slowly regains control. In other cases, it doesn't, and the situation is life-threatening. In order for us to stop this corona reaping havoc in our bodies, we either need to stop the virus from getting into our cells, or getting to our cells, stopping the replication of the virus somehow, or we need to show our immune system how to fight the virus and maintain control over this virus from the start. Okay, so let's look at ivermectin now. 
Ivermectin was originally created for animal use only in order to treat parasite infections such as intestinal worms, lice and mites. Recently, ivermectin has also been studied to treat a range of viruses. The hypothesis is that the ivermectin inhibits the coronavirus by means of blocking the cargo transporter protein. So in turn, the virus cannot duplicate within our bodies and the situation cannot get any worse than the original corona cells the body was exposed to. This phenomenon is not new and it's been researched since 2014 when Thailand started doing clinical trials against DNV infections. According to those specific studies, infected cells treated with ivermectin showed a 93% reduction in viral RNA after being exposed to ivermectin for 24 hours. Other studies done in Japan suggest that all viral particles were killed within 48 hours. Okay, great. So clinical trials suggest that the ivermectin carotid chops the transporter proteins, thereby limiting the replication of the virus. But what does this mean in the real world, and is this practically achievable in our own bodies? Another study suggests that the ivermectin IC50 value, which is the concentration value that reduces the activity of the virus by 50%, is 2.5 to 5 micromolar. These concentrations are equivalent to 2,190 and 4,370 nanograms per milliliter. This is notably 50 to 100 times the peak concentration or C max achieved in the plasma after the safe 200 micrograms per kilogram was administered to the patient. Pharmacokinetic studies in healthy volunteers have suggested that single doses of up to 120 milligrams of ivermectin can be safe and well tolerated. However, even within this dose, which is tenfold greater than those approved by the US Food and Drug Administration, the CMAX values of the reported were 13 of one order of magnitude, lower than the effective in vitro concentration against the SARS-CoV-2. Some studies even suggest that trials should be done on inhaling ivermectin as this would increase the CMAX value in our lungs. So long story short, ivermectin alone is not enough to help you at your worst and that studies are still being done on the best treatment and supplement combinations. Yes, ivermectin does inhibit the virus, but you need to be able to stop the virus early enough. If some parts of your body has more particles than the safe dosage of ivermectin can handle, then you are in big danger. So remember that prevention is better than mitigation and crisis management. So mask up, keep those hands clean, and do whatever you can to keep that immune system strong.